This is Wonder Bread, and this was um, the, well, what I haven't done, and, and this was a show where I sh sort of got very interested in the process, and at this point I was controlling the stain. Um, people call it my Mondrian and, um, and dots. So it was the, if, you, if you've ever, and I should, you know, if you follow, I think Wonder Bread went out of business, which makes sense. <laughs> There's not a lot of wonder these days. So, but one, well, I've always thought loved Wonder Bread was this kind of malleable form that you could kind of mush up and, and play with. So, um, and also this was in Belgium, and I love this idea of something that's kind of so sacred and this kind of cheesy American, you know, but it's also the uh, logo too. So going back to Warhol and the kind of iconic form, so the dot becomes a logo. So the sheets, uh, there are 11 um, horizontal, 11 um, um, vertical and the sheets are what I put under so they're my beautiful rags so what's on the floor is really what's not supposed to be on the floor the beautiful velvet and it's flip-flop the kind of ugly color to you see the real color and then what's on the wall are my sh sheets so I don't I this was like one of the only times I've ever done that but I really love the you know what's not supposed to be on the wall on the wall what's not supposed to be on the floor on the floor I have an irreverent nature, and I think I'm also a contrarian, and I think that's how I've ended up in this space, but, you know, it's been, really been um, a way to kind of, if you look at the early work, too, this kind of horizontal plane, and it's very much about a different tactility and a different physicality, which, I, which has been really important for me, and that's where the installation comes in, that you you walk around something, you can, and later on you get in something. So what's, what's this becomes this, and there's a fluidity of form. There's rules to certain pieces, you know, a pile piece is always a spill piece, is, but um, a piece like this is, is always, um, has a certain geometry. This is the Red Desert. And it was in a beautiful space, and I was interested in this idea of that form can be fluid, that I'm, I'm working in scale, and it can still have this power or this kind of presence. So not everything has to be big and tall and erect. <laughs> yes. So then, um, this was a piece called Splendor in the Grass, Gl Glory in the Flower. And it was at the Modern, and this is 93, 94, 94. And it was in a show called Women and Minimalism, Sense and Sensibility, Women and Minimalism. And it's all these different patches. And I thought at this point that the, the stain was really like my fingerprint. And I'm also, I love this idea of quilting and patching and, and still life even of making a piece. So there is a structure and the structure is the color wheel. And um, so you start, you know, and, and this one, it's, it's funny, it should be yellow, but of course I went red, yellow. And, um, but, what was nice is this piece hadn't been shown in um, 15, 20 years, and it was at Worcester, and I did a little um, um, nine, work, of my nine, work from the 90s. And this is E. So I like this idea that, you know, that the work is uh, almost like a puzzle. And so um, I started cutting the work and what was curious there's only one of these pieces but i also started dying on color so color on color gives you a different weight i'm always interested in the kind of different weight the different tactility the different kind of emotional weight of of color um, so one day um, i thought of the early spill pieces and the beautiful like the box piece and the first stain pieces and i really like those forms so what I did is just started cutting those forms out. So everything is hand cut, hand dyed, and um, nothing's ever glued down. So the work um, has, and this was in um, Soho, and it was the first of these shows, and the piece is called Eclipse. And so you can see going back to the, um, it following the structure of that, the color has 
four different um, structures, almost like little islands. And it was the first piece you really could walk through and in. And I really like this idea that you're in a painted space. So I cut out the fat, got rid of the white, and started dyeing. And then within the color, sometimes you see the opposite hue, because I think it's, it's really interesting to, you know, there's a lot of yellows I can get, but it's really nice to put its opposite. There's a lot of browns and blacks, but it's really nice to put the opposite. So this piece, um, Eclipse, was an Antonioni movie. It's the, starts with the end of a love affair and ends at the beginning. So this kind of optimism. So a kind of reverse optimism. So at this point, um, so this was a solo show, and then um, there was a show about painting, painting the field, and that um, was in, this was a group show and in Sweden, in I think it was in um, Malmo. So it was interesting for me, they said, oh, we want the work to travel, we want to, um, in a show, and so, you know, there the rules weren't. It's like, what are the rules to this work? What's innate to the to the piece? And so, what was innate was, you know, the kind of the sections of the piece, and also kind of the the forms that pieces make. So these pieces are very labor intensive. But what I love is like the canvas, the floor. Um, changes, and it really changes the work too. And it was really for me that the work is experiential, that I'm, I'm sort of learning and setting it up to learn as I, as I go, and it's, it's really by the kind of opportunities that I've had. So, um, a, this was also in Sweden, and I, I think that um, I have one side of my brain that loves excessive and kind of um, extravaganza and um, I think it's obnoxious too, but, and then I love this kind of structure and very simple structure and this is sort of my sweater set or my Ellsworth Kelly um, on the floor, but I've always loved um, ge simple uh, geometric abstraction and I think in another life I probably was one, but it, it comes out this way. And these are different kinds of fabric, so I'm always experimenting with different kinds of fabric. The first materials that you saw, it was crushed stretch velvet and I was really interested in the fact that you look at it and you can never s really get a sense of it, um, that the color and the texture, this is um, a piece called Blow Up, and we also, um, it had a nickname, I forget my, um, uh, it's a, it was um, uh, my um, alien vomit. <laughs> so, but it's a beautiful alien vomit. So, um, but this one had no rules. I could dye any color and any structure and then it was all. But if you can see the kind of quality of the light, I was really interested in by using fabric that does, that's not even made anymore. I would go to, um, that's what's so great about New York, I would go to um, and buy a lot of remnants in the fabric district. So I just was working with fabric that really, um, the, as I always say, gravity's my best friend, that really took dye very well and that kind of, um, would lay flat. This is at the San Francisco um, in Art Institute, and it's called The Night. And I love this kind of brutalist um, architecture. It's, it's one of the most beautiful um, spaces in San Francisco. On the outside, you have the bay. In the inside, you have this beautiful uh, brutalist architecture. So what was interesting, here I am, going into this work, and it's becoming much more about l landscape and the organic. And so um, what I really wanted to do is just do a piece that sort of reference the outside in, the San Francisco Bay and landscape. But when I started out, you know, that's what I think is really wonderful as an artist, to kind of pay attention to let the work lead you. And so this was a very large scale installation. I made everything in my studio, packed it in a bag, in <laughs> a box, and then kind of worked in the space. So everything is, is very improvisational and um, situational. 